today we're uh, we've got the fourth annual um, Merida Walker 100 combination of uh, about 60 kilometres of single track and 40 kilometres of forestry roads and uh, gravel climbs. So, and uh, with a total of 2,700 metres of vertical climbing, there's going to be some seriously tired legs at the end of today. So, hopefully, it'll give them a good warm up for the single speed champs next weekend. I'm not nervous at all. I'm not nervous at all. I'm not worried about the fact that there's three zero to 400 metre climbs and then about 20 kilometres. Not worried about the fact we've had about two hours sleep. Not worried about the, about the fact that we were eating dodgy Singapore noodles and drinking beer rather than concentrating on race nutrition last night. I'm not worried about anything at all. It's going to be a, uh, going to be easy. Plain sailing, brother. I'm excited, mate. I'm really, really excited. I think I'm probably going to uh, have a heart attack or something along that line. So it's going to be fun, but. It's good so far, yeah, I think we just had the first of the big climbs, but I can't really be sure because uh, as a part of me, it's a little bit worried that it wasn't one of the big climbs, it was one of the little climbs, but it's been brilliant so far, the track's fantastic, I mean, you couldn't ask for better riding conditions at the moment, it's overcast, but it's not raining, it's, you know, not too hot, it's certainly not cold, and we're just loving it, the ground is just, there is so much traction, it's hero dirt absolutely everywhere, it's having a ball so far, I think we're about a, just under a third of the way through, eating a lot of food and <laughs> drank probably too much water, but it's going bloody well. Good man, loving it. As soon as I got to split ends, big smile on my dog. It's good. Yeah, a few few cramps, but not too bad, hey. I was expecting a little bit worse. So if it gets worse from here, I'm uh, I'm in the box already, but right. I'll get there. Man, I've, I've, I've done the obligatory walk on two hills now, the last one on the one before. Uh, it's been brutal, mind you, I've had a, I've had a local guy who's been towing, towing my ass around a bit, which, is, which has helped a lot, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of good because you get to the top of some of those absolute bastard hills, and then you've got a 15 minute descent that is just off the hook, you know, so. Ole! <laughs> nice work, I better chase him down. Well done. Well done, Solid effort, man. Single speed. Oh. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> oh, Marcus, you're a bastard. <laughs> no, thanks, up. man. When you come up and you think you're at the top of Gunnagotta, and then it just goes again and again. <laughs> I just wanted to kill you. Last night. Well done. Thanks, brother. That was unreal, eh? I am done. I'm toast.
I finished. I finished. I ate it well, man. Flat pedal on a big bike. It's amazing. Yeah, I got strong thighs now. <laughs> I didn't cramp. And it was good. Buns. And tight buns. Tight buns, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can advertise that in town later. <laughs> Here we are today. We've come down to Lake Taupo, about an hour south of Rotorua. We're going to go ride W2K Trail, which is amazing, giving you some insane views out over the lake, and then heading to Craters of the Moon to ride the fabled trails there. We've had a tire deflation, but it's not going to ruin our spirits because we are here at the trailhead of the unbelievable W2K trail on the shores of Lake Taupo. I mean, have a look at this. It doesn't get any better in terms of the start of a trail. I mean, this, this is ridiculous. It's epic. I mean, we've ridden like three kilometers or something from the, the Kinlock car park and we've got views like this and the trail is going to be insane coming back down. It's been unreal to climb. It's just got that perfect flow the whole way. It's been easy to climb and you know that going back down is going to be so much more, more fun. Yeah, and when you, you just want to use superlative adjectives like epiphenomenal and to describe this. Exquisite. Yeah. 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 I think so. A veritable cunnily, uh, <laughs> a veritable culinary delight for a mountain bike. Yeah, that's right. Mm. What, it, what he said. Just ridden the amazing W2K trail here at Taupo. Um, truly mind blowing. Just incredible flow the whole way up and then even better flow the whole way down. And it finishes on the lake where you can come and backstroke your rolling. How's the serenity? Here we are at uh, Taupo, at Craters of the Moon, and we're about to hit up the coast of G2 Trail, which is predominantly downhill and it has some of the most amazing turns and undulations that you'll find. In it. Corn, but pretty rank. I didn't eat no corn. <laughs> oh, this is um, this is a very nice bratwurst sausage, all the way from Germany, and it's got some sauerkraut in there, white bread roll, and some mustard and tomato sauce, ketchup on there to um, add to the culinary experience I'm about to go through. I'm going to wash it down with this 
Edel beer, which is very nice. I'm here today riding the South Star shuttles at Rotorua and we're loving it. It's great. It just makes a good day to come out and do some runs and uh, there's just tracks everywhere. Oh, it was perfectly captured. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was awesome man, just rode the uh, Little Red Riding Huck um, through some waist deep puddles and shit, it was pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, awesome. Oh, it's insane hey, there's nothing like it in the Southern Hemisphere, so loving it. Yeah, they just link up one after the other until you get so much speed that you just, you just lose it. Oh, good times. There's been lots of crashes actually. Um, I've crashed, he's crashed, he's crashed, that guy's crashed. <laughs> he's crashed. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> Have you crashed? No, not He today. hasn't crashed? Yeah, We're so gonna make going to make him crash. Our next <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a over a boom moment. I'm trying to adjust the seat post at the incorrect time. <laughs> While riding. Yeah, no. oh. I got punged. <laughs> He got punged off the track, eh? Bounced around like a ping pong. <laughs> Whoa. It was so good. We got our lock. We got the lines a bit sorted now that we know where it's like a drop and where it's a jump and what the gap is. So we're just pinning down there and having heaps of fun. Llewellyn's hitting all the jumps with the complete Llewellyn style. <laughs> Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa of a Western. Yeah. Sometimes he looks like you know, a wishbone. His legs. Starting to be pretty hectic. one of those times.
Unlike the riding in Taupo and Rotorua where you're pretty much right in town the whole time and you've got all the conveniences and if anything goes wrong you're going to be fine. Uh, out here at the Morangi track it's a little bit different. It's a 38k ride so it's a pretty long way to start off with. There's some serious hills and there's some serious descents and you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're absolutely miles from anything. Now because it's a shuttle too you need transport to and from each end. We use Scott and Vanessa from Jailhouse Farmstays and Shuttles who are locals here in Furunaki and they uh, will transport you to and from the trailhead which is really awesome. Um, you need to be aware too that the hills require a pretty uh, decent level of fitness. I mean if you're going to take all day you can battle through it um, but you really want to be up to the task to get the most out of it and enjoy it and uh, whatever you do don't fall over the edge because there's some serious drops and there's going to be consequences if you do. We've come south of Rotorua about an hour today to the amazing Furunaki Rainforest to ride the Morangi Track. Now this trail goes through uh, incredible pristine native rainforest. It's like nothing else you're ever going to get a chance to ride. It's truly dinosaur kind of country. It's pretty amazing. Just going to hang a right here for nature. Oh. oh, it's beautiful. It's really pretty hard to keep your eyes on the trail out here, even though you really want to because there can be some serious consequences if you fall off the edge. Everywhere you look is absolutely stunning. Uh, the trees, the ferns, the roots, it's just like nothing that we've ever seen, especially coming from Australia. It truly, truly is beautiful. Oh. Two hundred and fifty-six shades of green here in New Zealand. Apparently, it's chlorophyll central. I kind of feel like I'm at a Greenpeace rave party. Try this, try this bro, it'll be good for your knee. Okay. Just, just crunch it up a little bit. Mmm. Pepper. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Wait, it'll get it'll get hot. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's very spicy. Wash it down with a banana. So after such an epic ride, we're so hungry that we only have time for three word description of how good it was. Stunning, epic, and unique. That's all folks. That's all. We're here at the Bike Culture 16 inch wheel world championships. They're being contested here in scenic Rotorua and everybody's pretty fired up. So far the only rules that have been established are you can't change lanes, but uh, I don't think there's any issues with helmets or silly regulations. In about half an hour we'll have a new world champion. Mate, I'm up against some kid who looks like he should fit on the bike properly. <laughs> Big time, man. <laughs> Newly crowned world number five 16 inch kids bike racer, Jason Blackie, lay down Sally Blackmore. How does it feel, Jason? 
Today's today's been my highlight. Yeah, definitely. Because you're only pretty much as good as your last race. That's very true, isn't you it? Know, Trent? Now tell, tell me, how, how, did it, how did it feel to come across come across the line? I know that you secured yourself a fifth place. I mean, you threw the chain at the end. Was you a bit disappointed? Do you think you could have taken it through and perhaps had the rainbow stripes tattooed across your butt? Yeah, I was going for world champs today, but um, fifth is pretty good. It's good. A couple of the boys had some big moments. Mm. OTBs mm. Mm. over the bars, mm. off the back. Mm. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Did a Jordan call to Australia <laughs> proud today, ladies and gentlemen. Rearrange some earth, probably rearrange some internal organs. Definitely gonna go home with a hematoma or two. Don't know how he's gonna explain that to the wife. Yeah. Anyhow, it's been it's been lovely chatting with you, Jason Blackie. Lay down, Sally Blackmore. <laughs>
Uh, just about to jump in this uh, little tin dinghy here. Someone's looks like they've put a very large motor in the back of. And hopefully we're going to have a little bit of excitement. This is Dorothy the cow. She doesn't know it yet, but she's about to feed the silverback, Jordan Cole. Now we've been very generous here. Jordan has been. He's had able, every chance available to him. I know. This this is we have gone beyond generosity. I'm here. emotional. I'm emotional. <laughs> He doesn't have to get the sack back in crack wax. He had the option of kissing the bison. We couldn't get the bison close enough. Now he has to accept the milk from the udder. Warm your hands. Warm your hands up, mate. You wouldn't touch your wife with cold hands. So uh, show the cow some respect. Come on. There you go. On your back. On your back. Come on. She's looking at you, mate. <laughs> That's nothing! That's it! Does he know you're wearing a leather hat? <laughs> hey mate, that looks pretty wrong, eh? <laughs> looks like something else. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's you guys. Let me show it over, guys. Silverback had the fury within him, but it wasn't enough tonight. He, he had the anger. He had the anger. He was angry. That was working in his favor. Very good. Awesome guy. He's our editor, he might be light, but he's got this very nasty habit of coming in the corners way too hot and then having to make up for it afterwards. And so there's going to be plenty of passing opportunities for sure. We're here at an off road NZ for the uh, Rotorua Single Speed Society Mountain Bike Editors Challenge. We've got Spoke Magazine, Australian Mountain Bike Magazine, and NZM's Mountain Biker uh, going head to head in a battle, a battle royale. This is uh, national pride on the line. We've got this stig out here, no one has any idea who he is. He's been pretty bloody stoic so far, but um, I've got a, I've got a pretty good feeling that AMB is going to kick his ass. That was very good. That was exceptional. Great track. Really done a very good job of making it. Oh man, I think I was pretty average to be honest. I think I spent more of more of my time sliding sideways uh, instead of going forwards and uh, being passed by more people than I passed. And uh... Team Australian Mountain Bike Magazine. Yeah. Check cleaning, that out! Cleaning up! Yeah, yeah suckers! Yeah. Across the pond, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's hotter than I thought. I don't know. I'm rolling with the O3 award Bear. winner. Oh, about a thousand? No. At least. Out of 10? Yeah, about 10. Yeah, yeah. 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 Heart rate monitor here. We're going to put this on Pat because he's scared of heights. I'm going to see what he can get his heart rate up to on the skydive just from adrenaline. Uh, we're about to throw ourselves out of a plane for the very first time. I think I just saw Pat's lip quiver. What's your heart rate at the moment, mate? My heart rate. 
Oh, it's a Calm 87. Calm 87, we'll see how long that stays there, hey? <laughs> Good job, bro. <laughs> There's some big BMXs in town. Big wheels, one gear. All coming in here, using up my workshop. Um, buying stuff they forgot to bring over with them. Lack of preparation. Yeah, single speed action, 2010. Nice work. We're here on the morning of the Single Speed World Champs, uh, ready to rock and roll, and I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. I'm starting to get the feeling this whole event is pretty much just an excuse for Kiwi guys to dress in drag. It's ridiculous. So uh, we're ready to rock. 10.30-ish 1030, uh, 1030 kind of start, and uh, 40 k's. I think there's four beer stops along the way. Uh, it's going to be an interesting race. Pretty early to start drinking, I reckon, but uh, I think I'm going to have to do, do everyone proud in the, uh, in the old silver fern. So... <laughs> This is not your usual mountain bike race, mate. <laughs> this is something weird. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't what I'm used to. I'm a little bit scared. I think the best one so far has to be the guy who was, uh, and the little man Keeney with the chains um, and the purple patent and leather hat. That was just a, another level. I think, we've, I think we've got a winner with that guy. <laughs> That was unreal, eh? Like nothing else. Incredible. I don't think the beer was really a good choice, but uh, maybe the short guys paid off.
We're on our way to Hawke's Bay this morning, which is the fruit basket and the wine bottle of the North yeah. Island, and also home to yeah. some unreal trails around Napier and Havelock North, we're looking forward to. We're here at the Pan Pack Eskdale Mountain Bike Park, which is run by the Hawke's Bay Mountain Bike Club, one of the biggest mountain bike clubs here in New Zealand with almost 2,000 members. It's about two and a half hours from Rotorua or an hour and a half from Tapa, so it's a pretty easy drive and you can definitely do it in a day. It's private property though, so you do need to get yourself a pass before you ride here. You can buy a three week membership for about seven bucks, so it's dirt cheap and lets you get access to these amazing trails. Now one of the best things about the Pan Pack Eskdale Mountain Bike Park is its location. At one end you finish in a lavender farm, at the other end you finish in a vineyard. Now speaking of vineyards, what's for lunch boys? Wine tasting. Mmm, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Thank you Napier, you've turned it on a treat, awesome day. Thank you Concrete Block for making us the same height. <laughs> <laughs> it really helps with the filming. No, but it was a good day. We went. Yeah, it was fantastic. We drank delicious wine. Yeah. We ate delicious food. We did, we rode some great trails. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to have a beer on the, on the deck of the shed. That's going to be amazing. Yes, thank you. Thank you, goodbye. Here we are, about 6.30 in the morning, all set for a 7 o'clock start, and slowly uh, Tapo is starting to fill up with a lot of lacquer and a lot of carbon. This is absolutely massive. The riders have been going out for what seems like forever already, and they just keep on coming. The whole main street is full. They go all the way down around the corner. This is a massive event. We're here today with Julian Dean, one of New Zealand's Probably New Zealand's very fastest road racer, and he's just finished the uh, Lake Taupo Cycle Challenge 160Ks around beautiful Lake Taupo. How was it? How'd it go? Oh, it was good. It was a beautiful day. Um, you know, early start this morning, but um, when you get down around the back of the lake there, the views are just magnificent down to Mount Ruapehu. <laughs> now, you're not only a, uh, a, a road racer, you're a pretty bloody keen mountain biker nowadays too, I hear. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm based in, in Rotorua when I come to New Zealand, so, um, you know, when you're based in Rotorua, there's, um, you can't help but be involved in mountain biking. Um, you know, sensational uh, forests and sensational facilities there um, for mountain biking. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Speaking of the Rotorua area, what's your favourite trail? If you had to pick one out of the forest for your retirement? Um, I think uh, Split Ends is probably one of my favourite ones, you know. I'm not, I'm not too extreme, and it's a good ride up to the top there. It's a nice um, cruisy trail coming back down, but, uh, you know, great thing with the Redwoods is there's something for everybody here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, the whole Central Park area, there's so much to do, and, you know, if you're into the outdoors, outdoor activities, this is the place to be. So it's been a seriously epic week here in Rotorua from 100k races to the single speed world champs to throwing ourselves out of planes and racing go-karts and just about everything in between and some seriously amazing riding too. So sorry to leave but I think we, uh, I think we did our best to fit just about everything that we could in. So we'll be back soon I'm sure.